Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week is a little different because I spent the entire weekend, this past weekend, uh, working on Spencer's in my wedding invitation and I recorded everything uh, for a Skillshare class. So from start to finish, from concepting to experimenting with layouts, different lettering styles, vectorizing the type, uh, creating um, a print ready file where you won't have to incur any setup fees or additional costs when you bring your file to letterpress printing. So everything is there in the class and the class is called laying out your lettering for letterpress. And I will leave a link to that class in this video's description. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're on my blog, every-tuesday.com, you can find a link there to go visit the class. There's also an intro video there so you can get uh, a more rounded sneak peek of the what the entire class is about. This video that I'm about to show you is another sneak peek. Uh, it's one of the videos that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see unless you were enrolled in the class. So it's kind of like a little gift to all of my YouTube watchers and blog readers. So that being said, um, if you'd like to take the class, I will also leave a link so you can get one free premium month of Skillshare, which is really amazing. There's lots of different videos on there. So be sure to click on that link if you decide to sign up or take any class on Skillshare. Hopefully you'll take this one though. Uh, so with that said, sign up for the class. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and here we go. Okay, so now we have all of our research pulled. We have our content all written out. We've split it up so we know what the hierarchy is. So now we can begin kind of mixing the two together and creating some thumbnail sketches of our layout. So these are not meant to be perfect by any means. They're very loose. It's just organizing the content so we have an idea of where things will go, how everything will fit together before we really start sketching things out because it helps to know how big certain things need to be. Like I, I really like uh, a very thick serif typeface for our, um, Spencer's and my name. So I, I need to know that I'm going to have enough room for our names and then figure out how much room will be left over for any other styles of type for the rest of the invitation. So you can see I pulled these two because they were my favorite from the research that I had done and I just kind of loosely based a lot of these layouts on them. You can see how I pulled certain elements, these corner elements from this one. Um, you can see this is kind of like a little ribbony banner with a big circle in the middle. So this kind of mimics that, this as well. And just kind of seeing how everything's going to fit together because I know how much content I have and I need to know that everything will fit in the end. So once you figure out some layouts that you really like, now you can start really focusing on the style of lettering that you'd like to use. And the other important thing um, that I'd like to mention is you can see how back in the day, they're using a lot of different styles um, and mixing them together. And it's really effective. It actually works in graphic design in general when you're using fonts. It doesn't typically work too well. Um, most of the times we say two or three fonts at the most. But when you're hand lettering, there's something very authentic about it where you can mix and match and it's okay. So it's really important to go back to your research and see what types of styles are being used together. So as you can see right here, I've got this really thick serif and it's coupled with this very tall, almost condensed sans serif. So I'm kind of making mental notes of these things as I'm going into the typography portion of um, just sketching and figuring things out. So just make sure you pay attention to those things. The same kind of thing is kind of happening right here. Uh, and that'll just make everything more well-rounded as you move on. So I'm just gonna walk you through my process from this stage all the way to the finished design. So the next thing I did was just start sketching, you know, just get as much on paper as you can and figure out what's working and what isn't working. This felt really good to me, but it wasn't quite where I wanted it. Um, as you can see, I experimented using the ampersand, writing my name at an ang our names at an angle. Um, here you can see I, I pulled <laughs> from the, the Spencer um, packaging just to see what that would look like, but I really wasn't into it, so I scrapped that pretty quickly. Uh, this one you can see I, I kind of mimicked this angle that this was um, arranged at, but still applying that heavy serif. Um, you can see I pulled, you can definitely see where um, this was inspired by. 
uh, this next one you can see how here I've begun mixing the two styles so I've got this very thin condensed sans serif and I'm still mixing it with my heavy serif and this next one you can see I'm really starting to lay things out now I'm figuring out what types of corner treatments I like I know that I want corner treatments and then uh, just bringing in the whole southern rustic feel I thought maybe throwing in a few leaves I didn't want it to get too floral because there are a lot of wedding invitations that are super like flowery and floral but that just didn't feel like us so I wanted to make sure I could avoid that but I still wanted the very rustic woodsy feel and I felt like incorporating these little um, these little leaves might accomplish that so I was just kind of experimenting with that I didn't like um, at first I thought it would be great if I my name went at on a curve and Spencer's name went on a curve but when I saw the two together I really wasn't into it which led me to um, putting them both on the same curve here and you can see I brought in this condensed sans serif once again and then I've played with a ribbon element some very short uh, sans serif just because it's you know it's um, not the most important but you still want to draw attention to it it is in the center and then you can see um, like we talked about with the content hierarchy the date and the time and the address are still on the same level and you can see at the bottom dinner and dancing to follow is very much um, the bottom of the totem pole so to speak so from here um, I was feeling like it was getting really busy because once I brought in uh, just sketching out some corner treatments you can see that it's getting really really busy and then adding another one um, up in these corners I kind of felt like I was gonna get these really big uh, white spaces and I didn't want to just fill them in with with swirls and leaves like that didn't that didn't feel like the right path to follow for me so I decided to strip all the decoration away keep the corner treatments, adjust it a little bit, going back to the research um, and pulling this really nice corner element here, but still keeping these um, swirly corner treatments in the bottom two corners. And this really started working for me. So you can see I've got some lines drawn in. I drew, redrew this a bunch of times. Um, just making everything fit together and there's still a little bit of decoration but then I you know I wasn't sure about that because I really wasn't using it anywhere else except for the corner so I ended up taking that off completely and you can see once I've inked the final drawing all of those have been eliminated except for this divider right here and then these little little leaf kind of petally looking um, ornaments near some of the text and you can see how I've shifted some things if I go back to the sketch you can see how close the T is coming to the S and that was not feeling so great to me so when I was inking everything I did it on a light table and I just shifted uh, my drawing underneath just slightly so you can see how the T moves away from the S and I made a, a, a few other adjustments here and there so this ended up being the final inked drawing of the invitation so in the next video we will um, just create our file in Illustrator and then after that we'll vectorize this and I'll show you my method for vectorizing and we'll place it in there so everything can start being prepared for letterpress printing.